Hey there YouTube, today I'm working on my 1983 Chevy C10. As you can see here, I have a small block Chevy engine in it, it's a V8. And my problem is that I have a dead cylinder. Um, this truck was recently overhauled before I purchased it. Um, I don't know anything about it other than that. As you can see, I've already diagnosed that it's cylinder 8 in the back here. The way that you would check that normally is you fire it up. If you have dual exhaust, you'll be able to hear which side, uh, which bank, bank one or bank two, where a cylinder isn't firing. Then you come up into the engine compartment here and you disconnect spark plug wires and see which one doesn't make any difference. And for this one, it was cylinder eight. So after you do that, you check your uh, distributor. On this one, I've replaced the uh, cap and rotor since that was included with the truck new plugs and wires, and I've checked for spark while the vehicle's running. So I do know that the spark plug's good, and I'm getting a nice hot spark. And our next step would be a compression test. So here's what you'll need. You can get these at pretty much any parts store. All it is is a hose and a pressure gauge. It's got a nice little valve here on the end. I believe it's called a Schrader valve prevents the uh, compression from leaking out, so then you can see what the highest value was for your cylinder. Now one easy way to tell for sure that you have the right cylinder is when you pull the spark plug, it'll be damp. On a normally firing cylinder, it should be nice and dry. There might be deposits or all sorts of other stuff on it, but it should be dry. As you can see on the end of this hose, we've got a couple different types of threads. And this kit came with two other adapters for other styles of engines. On this particular motor, this uh, upper set of threads is the one that fits properly. So the way to test this is to disconnect all your spark plug wires. And be sure you num number them so you don't get them out of order when you put it back together. Then you connect your hose to whichever cylinder is having your uh, misfire issue. Connect your gauge to the other end and crank it over a couple times. Then when you come back out, you can check your pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So as you can see here, I've got all my wires disconnected and numbered. There they are, just laying around. So I'm going to go into the cab here and crank it over. As you can see here after cranking, I still have a reading of 0 PSI. Now this is very unusual. Usually if you have a cylinder that's misfiring, it'll still make some compression, not none at all. So I apparently have a pretty bad compression leak somewhere. I'm gonna go through a testing process that'll allow me to determine whether it's uh, the intake valve, the exhaust valve, or the piston rings or something with the cylinder. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect my uh, compression gauge here. I'm gonna attach a uh, tool that lets me put some air pressure into the cylinder itself. I'm going to do what's called a leak down test. So here's the parts that I have. And as you can see they're very similar to the uh, hose portion of the compression tester but it's got a different fitting on this end so I can hook it up to my airline. And you can see that right here. Now when we put some pressure into the cylinder we want to make sure that we don't do anything excessive. So I've regulated mine down to 10 psi. All we're going to do is listen for the sound of rushing air from the intake or the exhaust or the uh, oil dipstick tube or the fill, uh, fill point here on the valve cover. So first things first, I'll need to turn the cylinder over to top dead center. There's a couple different ways to do that. Um, one of the easier ones for things that are open like this is to pull the valve cover and watch your two valves in the back. Of course, there are other ways that people think are easier, but it depends on your preference. So, I'm going to turn it over top dead center, and then I'm going to hook up my lines here and put some pressure in it. One of the easier ways to turn your motor over, if you have some nice tight belts, is to use a socket on the uh, nut here on your alternator. And just turn it a quarter inch or so at a time until you're sure that both your valves are shut. So, I've gone ahead and done that. I've hooked up my line. So now I'm going to turn on my uh, air compressor, and we should be able to tell where the leak is coming from. 
so here it is. I've got my compressor running. Of course, if you have an air tank, you can charge that up and just use that instead. Just so be sure you use a regulator. And that's, I don't hear or feel any air coming from the uh, oil fill. Same for the intake, no noise there. So now I'm gonna go to the exhaust. So now I know that my cylinder has a problem with the exhaust valve. So I'll have to pull the head, probably replace a valve. So here's my truck with the engine all torn apart. There's that number eight cylinder there. Looks like the rings haven't scored the cylinder or anything, so I don't think there's any chunks of valve that got lost in it. The other ones look okay too. And here's the head. And these here are the front cylinders. You can see that'll look fine. Until we get to here. Now that is a burnt valve. Can't. It should be sitting way up here. There shouldn't be any pieces of it missing. It should sit nice and flush like these ones. 